my daughter has always liked to read. She's always loved books. I don't dislike them. I just always thought myself too practical for fiction. I like facts, calculations, things I can add together and analyze. She meets a frog that turns into a prince. I met frogs that I turned inside out for the good of science and learning. If I had read more of her books, I know more about things like homonyms, words that sound the same but have different meanings. Since I haven't, I, I guess I don't really care, but here's one anyways. Peace. Peace on earth. A, a piece of pie, a little piece of heaven, a piece of junk. Peace of mind. Inner peace. Piece of cake. The peace of God. Peace with God. Why is peace such a difficult thing for us to grasp? It could be because of selfishness or the denial of what is right. You think that if you disclaim any kind of responsibility, it, it frees you from it? Happiness is a precious and fleeting thing that parades itself before you just to be snatched away. When you realize you don't deserve it, the more you reach for it, the more it dissipates. Bitterness and shame become frequent companions. Soon, this safety of withdrawal is made impenetrable by a wall of self-preservation. Grief and fear become your lonely fortress. You lock out peace because you think you shouldn't have it. All of these are true in my case. All because of me. I am where I am because of me. It never occurred to me that there was anyone else to blame. And, and I took comfort knowing that, that I put myself in this mess, even if I wasn't the only one to suffer for it. I never thought I'd have a life like mine. It's not special, it's just regular. It keeps going whether I want it to or not. Life goes on. People make choices all the time, which couch, which car, which job, which man. I do pretty normal things. Every morning I get up and go. Some mornings are harder than others, but everyone has those kinds of days, right? <laughs> There's always going to be something you don't want to do, whether it be cook dinner or fold laundry. But then there are days, bright, beautiful, sunny, new days with no mistakes in them. that I want nothing to do with. New mistakes don't matter when you have old ones. Hey, Mo. Hey, baby, what you up to? Oh, nothing much. You want to help me? No, not really. <laughs> Stinker. Guess you're on your own, Mom. Good thing I don't ever make a mess. <laughs> Good thing. Since when do we get outdoor life? Oh, uh, Sam's been getting it. He thinks he needs to try a new hobby. Oh, right, midlife. Is there a crisis you want to tell me about? Yes. Uh, we are buying a boat, a big one, and we're going to sail around the world. Want to come? <laughs> I'm tired of the business world? <laughs> I'm not sure, but the great outdoors is calling. So there is a boat? Yeah. No. Uh, Sam just wants to try something new. <laughs> when does he have time for that? He doesn't. Just likes to think about it. 
What's the deal with this? Oh, I've been meaning to get a picture in there. I just haven't gotten around to it. I've always wondered about the photos in frames when you buy them. Who are these people? Why do they look like they're having so much fun? And why do these photos usually look better than the one you end up putting in there? <laughs> I have no idea. You could put in one of Craig and Julie. I suppose. I'll ask her for one when they get here. Julie's coming home? Yeah, Julie's coming up tomorrow. How are they doing? Well, uh, she and Craig just got back a few weeks ago. Oh, right. Uh, how is Europe? What did they do there? I guess we'll hear about it tomorrow. You didn't talk to her when they were there? I did, once or twice, but they were a little busy and they, they didn't always have a phone. Sure. She and Sam talked mostly when they called. Why didn't you? What? Talk to her. Why didn't you? I just told you that I did. But only a few times. And the other time she talked to Sam. Did you want to talk to her? I guess, yes. Don't be so convincing. Stop it, where is this coming from? Never mind. No, Danny, tell me what you mean. I'm just saying, you've still got her, Mom. No, I don't. I never have. Besides, she's a married woman now. She just got back from her honeymoon, and she's starting a new life with her husband. She's moving on. Mom, she's your daughter. She is. Doesn't that mean something? It means... It means a little piece of you is gone. Is that what you think? Mom. Oh, I almost forgot to... I don't think leaving the room changes the fact that... Happy birthday, Danny. Mom, you didn't have to get me anything. I know, but it's not every day that your son turns 25. <laughs> I guess. It is one of those mile marker birthdays, huh? <laughs> Certainly. A quarter of a century. That's how old you are. Whoa, that is getting old. Hey, watch it. Oh, no, I didn't know what <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, what yeah. Your mom's an old lady. It's been so long since I was your age, I can't possibly remember back that far. Well, it was a long time ago. Welcome home, little one. I'm going to lie down. All right. Mommy's going Betty bye. Wave night night. Good night. This is your house. See that? That's where you're gonna learn how to walk. And right there is where you're gonna fall down seconds later. And right here's where daddy's always gonna be there to catch you. I can't believe it, my little one finally home. I looked at you in the hospital all wrapped up tight. <laughs> your little hat from grandma and your wrinkly little head. Everything was so small. I didn't know something could be so small and <laughs> precious. And now after waiting for nine months, I get to see you, <laughs> and you're here. <sighs> Seemed like we were waiting forever. And now that you're here, it's gonna go by so fast. Soon you'll be talking and drawing on the walls. That's where I'm gonna make you practice your piano. <laughs> you'll fight and try and weasel your way out of it. I'll probably give in. <laughs> and then it'll be baseball games and your first date. You'll be nervous, I'll be nervous. <laughs> and then you'll leave us, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just stick to right now, shall we? I can't wait to show you everything, little one. Your mommy and I love you so very much. Our little Julie. Don't think for one minute that I've forgotten. That I don't think about that day, those days, over and over again. Not a minute goes by that I don't think about it. Don't forget, just remember. There's a difference between dwelling on something and remembering it. I'm not dwelling. Mom, you're dwelling. You've made a comfy place for all those thoughts and emotions. It's not a comfy place, Danny. It's dark. And the loneliness, is blistering. I don't know much about places like that. It doesn't have to be. Just open your present, okay? 
All right. Oh, there's a card. Oh, oops. To my son on his 25th birthday, you are only young once, but you can be immature for a lifetime. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Gosh, Mom, what happened to those nice cards you used to get me with dinosaurs or Power Rangers on them? They must have been fresh out of Power Rangers. <laughs> That's all right. This one's good, too. There's more. Oh. Danny, I can't believe how quickly the years have gone by, yet they've parted so slowly as well. If I could, I'd go back in time. Oh, my love. Mom. Thanks, Mom. I do. I know. Now open your present. This whole thing? How about a nice trust fund or a Beer of the Month Club membership? Sorry. <laughs> I'm not a baby anymore. Yes, you are, Danny. You'll always be my little baby. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, I was waiting out there long enough. I might as well wait in here, too. Ah, uh, well, Miss Frank. So, are you going to put a picture in here? I'm sorry? This frame. It's empty. <laughs> so it is. I always wonder about the pictures and the, the frames you get. You know, the ones you have to take out before you can put your own in. Who are those people? Why are, they, why are their pictures normally better than the ones you put in there? <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure I can find something. So, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you, Miss Brennan. Well, that's impossible. Why do I feel like this? Perhaps it is because you're pregnant. What? I... That can't be true. I... Um, <coughs> well, it is. Congratulations. No, I mean, that can't be right. I'm sorry? You must have done something wrong. Miss Brennan, I can show you another frame with my medical license. <laughs> I've been around long enough to know when a woman is pregnant. There's been some mistake. Go, there is go some and look mistake. again. Well, says you. Can't I get a second opinion or see it in print or something? No, I'm not a specialist. A specialist. Yes, I want one of those. I can refer you to an OBGYN. As for right now, I don't have all your paperwork with me, but I could fetch it if it would help. It would. Thank you. So, Miss Vernon, Here's your file. These charts are from your physical today. Your blood work came in, and as you can see, your HCG hormone level is far beyond normal. Now, it's a little early for an ultrasound, but we can still do one today if you'd like. I mean, you're only about eight weeks along, but that goes without saying. You are definitely- Don't say it. Expecting. <coughs> if you'd like, I can make a few calls and set you up an appointment with a gynecologist. They'll take good care of you in the months to come. What?
what? If you so choose, I can give you some literature today. There's going to be a lot of preparations before you're ready for this child. Now, if you could just answer a few questions for me about your medical history and the health of your family. If we receive any more test results, I'll be sure to give you these. all of those things. Well, I am. Uh, it's Craig. Craig? Yep. I've sat in a stuffy library reading to little girls about princes and castles and watching little boys chase them around, usually because they took the puppet they wanted. But now I feel like I'm getting my own little story. It seems like just yesterday he came to the library. And he was looking for... You don't care. No, tell me. He was looking for German poetry. He was in the wrong section, so I told him where to go. But he kept coming back and asking for more help. It was so cute. How am I supposed to know? How did you know? About what? <laughs> that dad was the one. Oh. Um. Sometimes you just know. Well, that's not very helpful. Did Grandma tell you that? <laughs> Figures. Grandma's not exactly the helping type. She's too practical. How am I ever going to know? I guess I'm not really sure what you're asking. I just need to be sure I'm making the right choice. I'm not the person to ask about making choices, Julie. Maybe you should talk to Aunt Nancy about I don't want to talk to Aunt Nancy. Look, I'm trying, Mom. I'm asking you. When did you know that Dad was the one? When I figured out someone else wasn't. What are you doing here? I, I had a feeling you could use some company. Well, I don't. Yeah, I'm not buying that. What am I, an investment fund? I'm fine. You want to talk about it? No. Okay. What did he do? Nothing. Never mind. Ruth, you can tell me. No. It's none of your business. Hey, when a friend of mine is hurting, I'm going to be there, OK? You can't push me away that easily. Mitch, what did he do? I had something to tell him, and he wouldn't even let me say it. Why not? He was too busy breaking up with me. What? Not in so many words, but that was the gist. I didn't even get the whole, uh, I want to see other people. You're not the one for me. I, I can't imagine spending the rest of my life not knowing if there's anyone else out there for me. Breakup speech. He just left. 
he's gone and he left me here like this what a jerk hey i'm sorry i never even got the chance to tell him You know, if you want, I can... No. I called just to say hi and ask how things were. I must have set a trigger because all of a sudden, there it goes. I'm lost. You were on the phone and... Yeah? Is this one of those times that because we're engaged, I'm supposed to instinctively know what you're thinking? <laughs> I hate the type of person who makes you feel defensive. They have to have a comment for everything you say. It's like they're judging or ready to pounce or fly off the handle for what you say or think. You're almost afraid to talk about things, to bring things up, to have someone else bring them up because you know they'll have a comment they just can't keep to themselves. So having an opinion is bad? <laughs> no. I just don't ever want to be someone like that. Someone who makes others uncomfortable? I doubt that you will. I just don't... I just don't want to be my mother. There it is. I'm with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me. <laughs> Doesn't every woman become their mother? So not helping, dear. <laughs> dear, huh. must be in trouble. Sorry. Your mother makes you uncomfortable? Sometimes. Really? I don't get that from her. Well, you haven't lived with her your whole life. You have the privilege of being a guest, a newbie, a novice, a greenhorn, a neophyte. Someone's been reading the thesaurus again. <laughs> Sorry, you can only read children's books for so long. I'm just saying, you don't know what you're getting into. Sometimes I wish she was super involved in everything I did. Like, what are those moms who put their kids in beauty contests? A pageant. <laughs> A pageant, right. <laughs> Wait, how did you know this? <clears throat> <laughs> Girl cousins. <laughs> she should be a pageant mom. Instead of a room full of baggage, I could have trophies and fluffy outfits. I love fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'd be easier to deal with a mom that's too close than one that's so far away. <coughs> hey, I know about distant parents, okay? My family's not perfect either. They're not exactly Ward and June Cleaver. Does that make you Wally or Beaver? <laughs> Have you talked to her about it? Talking. Why do people think that talking is going to solve any of their problems? I've learned there are things I just don't talk about with her. It makes it easier for everyone. But that can't be good. I keep things inside. You should have seen her when I told her about my first boyfriend. Your first boyfriend? You mean I'm not? Oh, cute. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, what's his name? Can we not do this? What is his name? Scott. Scott. Where did you meet him? What's with the interrogation, Mom? Gee. I can ask these things. Well, can you ask me in a calm voice? I'm sorry. This is my, I'm the mom. You're the teenager voice. Where did you meet him? At school. 
He's in my history class. And how long has this been going on? A few months. <gasps> months? And now I find out about it? Well, I didn't know how to tell you. How about a, hey mom, I'm dating someone. Simple as that. Yeah, sure. Can I just talk to Aunt Nancy about this? No! Why can't you just talk to me about it? Because obviously this is upsetting I'm me. not upset! I just want to know what my daughter is doing with a guy I've never heard of. Is it serious? It might be. I don't know, I, I guess. You guess? I can't tell yet. It's still just happening. I can't predict anything. What do you two do? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Julie, if this is serious, I need to know what my daughter is doing. Nothing. We're just dating. We go out. We have a good time. A good time? Yeah. What does that mean? Gosh, Mom, you want us play by play? We're teenagers. We hang out. That's what I'm afraid of. Are you guys? What? You could give me a little more credit than that, Mom. Julie, I just, I don't want you to do anything you're going to regret. I know something about regrets and I, no, we're not. <coughs> well. You're seeing this guy, and you don't tell me about him, and I have to wonder if there's a reason you're keeping this from me. Are you keeping anything else from me? <laughs> what? No! How am I supposed to know that? You're just going to have to trust me. After a while, she just stopped asking. But I always feel like she's still judging me. She's just concerned about you. Isn't that what mothers are supposed to do? No. She's waiting for me to make a mistake. She's waiting for it, just so she can say, I told you so. It's like she's always ready to pounce, like a kangaroo or a dingo or something. You make it sound like a safari. Well, it can be. Or like one of those shows where you have to survive just long enough to make it back to civilization. Birthdays around here can be downright dangerous. And holidays, you're an Everett rookie. I don't think you're gonna make it. I guess I got a lot to learn. You sure do. Look, I'm sure she cares about you so much. She just doesn't want to see you get hurt. I guess. Why are you so great? Not quite sure. <laughs> Perhaps it's my rapier wit. Or my mad skills at conjugating chem and verbs. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm marrying you. <laughs> so, are we going to talk about this wedding thing? I'm not sure if that's what's best right now. Well, as a guy, I'd rather leave all the talk up to you. <laughs> no. I mean the wedding. The wedding. Does there have to be one? Well, to get married, it kind of has to happen. No, just the whole pomp and circumstance. I don't think it's right for my family. So many people throw a big party for others and all those up behind are poorly taken pictures and a dress you'll never wear again. Do you not want to deal with your mother? Can't we have a day that's just for us? Something small and short and simple? I would love nothing better. I hate pomp. <laughs> Circumstance is okay, but nowhere are we gonna have pomp. <laughs> really? What if we decided to leave? Leave what? Not what, where. Leave everything. For a few weeks, a month. <laughs> Can you do that? I'd have to reorganize a few things. Besides, summer is a perfect time for a teacher to get away. What do you say we dust off the backpacks and put my conjugating skills to good use? <laughs> Are you saying? Let's elope. <laughs> Are you serious? Completely. We'll get the paper signed before we leave. So what do you say? Yeah? Uh, yes! Yeah! <laughs> do I make you feel defensive? No, that's why I can stand you. <laughs>
Oh, fine. We all decided it'd be better not to keep score. But if you had? We would have won. No contest. <laughs> That's my boy. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm all sweaty. Is that what that smell is? Ha ha. You still got it, Mom. Don't patronize me. I'm your biggest fan. You wouldn't be nearly as good as you are without me. How do you figure that? Who took you to all those t-ball practices and made treats for little league, little league games? And who bought you new cleats every year when your feet grew? You did. That's right, I did. The other team should have stuck with t-ball. We nailed them. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't be there. It's all right. You have other things going on. I get it. I would have come if I could. Sure. So what happened today? The usual. Uh, we went to church, made a big lunch. Sam's watching a game on TV. <laughs> Sounds exciting. Is that all? Mm-hmm. What's wrong, Mom? Nothing. Yeah, right. No need to lie to me, Mom. Why do you say that I'm lying? Because it's only with me that you're not lying. Around everyone else, you choose your words so carefully. Do you ever let your guard down? No, I... I can't. Susan Jenkins, from church, lost her baby last night. Oh. And I was going on about baseball. It's fine, Danny. She's a mess, naturally. They just told their family and no one else had heard. And then Mrs. Meyer came up to us talking today and put her foot in her mouth and asked how everything was going. How are you? I'm all right, as well as can be expected. Every time I think I find some peace, something happens and it all falls apart. Maybe there's a reason for that. There's a reason? I wake up in the middle of the night. There's a reason I ache inside every time I see diapers on TV. Yesterday, I lost it because of an email forward. I just mean that maybe you're not supposed to forget. I know I can't forget. You won't let me. You won't let you, Mom. Hey, honey. Is everything okay? You seemed awfully quiet on the way home today. I'm fine. And through lunch. Thinking about Susan, I feel so bad for her. The prayer for the family was nice. I guess I just wish something could be done. There's a reason for everything, even if we don't know what it is. Someday we'll know why that little baby had to leave. Susan had no control over it. That's the toughest thing. It it's not like she chose. Hey, come here. It's all right. We'll think of something we can do for them. A casserole, maybe. Every little bit helps. Speaking of cooking, I got a strange phone call today. Oh yeah? Who from? Craig. Um, he wanted to know what Julie's favorite meal was. You said spaghetti, right? No. I didn't know. I couldn't remember. That's all right. I'll call him up later. It's not necessary. It was for tonight. Tonight, huh? You don't think- He's gonna ask tonight! Has it really been that long? He called me up the other day, too. Well, that's old-fashioned of him. He was so nervous. <laughs> I felt bad for the guy. <laughs> They've only known each other a couple months. They... That's what I thought at first, too, but when I saw them together, when we met him for the first time, and I, and I heard him talk about Julie, I knew. She asked me what I knew about us. 
Oh yeah? What'd you tell her? But sometimes you just know. She asked me the same thing. So, I told her about our first date. It was just before graduation and you had finally agreed to go out with me. We were supposed to meet at the little hole in the wall you and Nancy really liked. You were sitting up at the bar eating peanuts or something. I had just come in and you hadn't seen me yet. And your shoe was dangling off of your foot. Now, I've never understood how women can do that without the shoe falling off. And maybe it's just a guy thing, but I was just mesmerized. <laughs> Anyways, that's what you were doing, and I told myself, I have to marry this woman. Sam. <laughs> it's true. High school was long over, and, and you weren't the little girl who'd come over and run around in our sprinkler. We'd all grown up. And I was so thrilled when you gave me the chance. You earned it. I always felt like I was on the sidelines during college. Nancy and I went to USI, and you went to Springfield. She would still tell me about the things you do, the, the people you would go out with. And I was so jealous that I wasn't there with you. I still saw you occasionally. That wasn't enough. I kept hoping if, that if I could try harder to be someone else, or if I could try harder to be there for you, that you'd let me in. I never wanted you to be anyone else, Sam. I was just hoping that one day you'd wake up and realize I was there the whole time. I did wake up. And you were there. Right when I needed you. Well, it took you long enough. I was so happy to just have a part of you, any part. I knew there was something, but I was so in love with you, even then, in the middle of whatever it was. He left me big shoes to fill. And I've never pretended like we're the perfect couple. But... I have been wanting to be your perfect husband since I was eight years old. And I've tried for a long time. I've stopped caring what it was or is. But I'm going to keep trying. for you guys. You know, I wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> we figured it out. The spaghetti dinner was a dead giveaway. I get the feeling Craig's not the best cook in the world. <laughs> Only on special occasions. <laughs> so, let's see it. It's perfect, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> it's an antique setting from his family. He got it resized and, well, I love it. 
That's all that matters. <laughs> so, what's the plan? Nothing very official yet. We just started talking dates and figuring out details. Barbie pink and lime green. <laughs> what? Those were your favorite colors. <laughs> yeah, were. I don't think those will be included in the wedding. Well, maybe they're Craig's favorite colors, and he wants them. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Craig's a very minimalist type of guy. Oh, I see. That's a good quality. <laughs> There's many more, believe me. You know, you guys need to come over more often. I would like to get to know him a little bit better. Maybe watch a game or have dinner. We will, I promise. It's all happening so fast. It seemed like it was just yesterday, and you were going to kindergarten and had wiggly tea. It was a little longer than that. Nope, I remember perfectly. You had a loose tooth, and you tried to con the tooth fairy. I wouldn't say con. I tried to get a dollar on credit because I didn't want to pull out my own tooth. I found the note you wrote and left under the bed asking for half the tooth's worth so that you could buy a book. Little women, you said I could get it. <laughs> so really, your library career is all thanks to me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Wait, you found the note? Yeah, I had to practice my girly handwriting so you'd think she wrote it. You found it? I figured fairies would fall under mom's realm. I always figured the tooth fairy was a guy. <laughs> so I took fairy duties, along with dance recitals and bedtime stories. You chose the best ones, Dad. You used to come running to me every time you scraped your knee, and I'd scoop you up and slap on a Barbie princess band-aid. <laughs> then when they always became broken hearts, I'd do the same thing. Only ice cream and shopping were better than band-aids. <laughs> All right, well enough of this mushy stuff. So, tell me about everything. There's not much to tell. We wanted to wait to talk to you and Mom and his parents first. And how did his parents take it? Not very well. They think it's too soon. It's been long enough. Oh, well, that's what I think. I don't know. I guess it has only been a few months. That's Craig rubbing off on me. I'm the safe one. He's the one backpacking and cycling and climbing rocks. <laughs> you know, it's good to be a couple that go together but aren't all the same. You and Mom are nothing alike. And that's why it works. But Craig's parents are nothing alike, and they separated. And some cases are better examples than others. <laughs> Craig and I talked, remember? He had the smarts to ask me for permission to marry you. And I wouldn't have consented unless I knew you were ready. Really? Really. Thanks, Dad. Just trust yourself next time, okay? Okay. <sighs> what am I gonna do without <laughs> you, Jules? I haven't been around for a while, Dad. It's not like I'm here that often. College? Work? Now, Craig? It's all stuff to take you away from your old man. <laughs> Nothing could do that. Don't worry. I'll always be your little girl. <laughs> you gonna finish that? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> 
I'm Shelly. Do I have to introduce myself? You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Gosh, whatever. It's not a big deal. I'm Lisa. You seem so calm. Well, sure. I've done this before. Really? You're not scared? Honey, I don't get scared over something like this. In no time, you'll be drinking punch and eating cookies in the other room. They're pretty good. Little chocolate cookies, it's the best part. Listen, how far along are you? 14 weeks. I'm at 12. You'll be fine. You caught it soon enough. Had you waited longer, it would take longer. It's a different process then. How do you know? Well, that's what I did last time, but this time I'm here earlier. I'm nervous. That's why I can't shut up. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Are you nervous? Only that I have to wait here much longer. I have to get back to work when this is done. My lunch shouldn't take this long. This waiting room's a lot nicer than the one downstairs. I had to wait there forever before they brought me up here. Yeah, that one always smells like old coffee. I didn't notice that. Will I be able to call my boyfriend after? If you have one. My mom drove me. I think she's waiting in the car. Or shopping. I drove myself. <laughs> what about you? Me too. Drove, I mean. Don't have anyone? No. Shopping. That sounds nice. I wish I could do that. Get out of here and be anywhere else. Maybe your mom will buy you something. No. She shops when she wants to forget about things. A platinum account. When I told her about it, she wouldn't look at me. She didn't look when I got out of the car. Take care of it. Michelle, you take care of it. You hear? What? That's what my mom said. I'm not sure this is what she meant. Well, one way or another, you'll feel better. Eventually. Lisa and Brenda, come on back. They're ready for both of you. That's me, guys. It's been a blast. Much better than last time. Let's go, kiddo. Is it my turn yet? No, I'm sorry, but I'm sure they'll be ready for you short shortly. Can I get you ladies anything? No, thanks. How about you, honey? N nothing. Thank you, ma'am. What's taking so long? Nothing to worry about. Sometimes these things can just take a while, but nothing to worry about. I don't want to be here long. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll be back to check on you ladies in a bit, and I'll let you know when they're ready for you. Thank you. I just want it to be over, you know? Yeah. Right. Fine, thanks. I get it. It's a big decision. Nothing says you're probably not going to college now. Like an accidental pregnancy. I was going to tell my mother. But she saw it in my eyes. She just looked at me and said, you're pregnant. 
I didn't even have to say yes. <laughs> she knew. She knows everything. And you're not going to marry David, are you? That I said no to. But she knew that too. And that was it. I called around and now I'm here. What did your mother say? Nothing. She doesn't know. I didn't tell her. Really? Did you want to tell her? No. Maybe. I don't know. I'm on my own. David would be here if I let him. I wish I could marry him. Why can't you? We're not ready in a lot of ways. He wanted to keep it too. That makes it harder. But I have my own ideas. None of this was planned, that's for sure. The plans were made a long time ago. Before all of this. And I want to keep them. So I'm going to. Kind of sounds like me. Yeah? What are you going to do? Grad school, biology, going to be a vet. That's cool. This is the point where they usually cry. What? That's what they told me. When no one else is around. You're still here? Yeah, I know. I guess saying it is helping me too. I'm not going to cry. Really? Most people cry. There's tissues up there if you want them. Nice ones. I bet they go through boxes and boxes of them. I'm fine, really. I won't say a thing if that's what you want to do. Suit yourself. I'm Shelly. <laughs> It'll be okay. They said it doesn't take long. speak to each other. It was really rough because she was my best friend and I missed her. We were girls and we had this secret pact. It was just between us. We didn't want Sam to know about it. Not that we were trying to exclude him, but he was a boy and therefore couldn't be part of the pact. And I don't think you would have understood anyway. To seal it, we had to give each other something. I gave Ruth a necklace. It was cheap and tarnished and turned your neck green if you wore it too long. But I thought it was from some pirate treasure. And when you're eight, things like that are important. <laughs> Ruth gave me a bookmark. It sounds silly. What would I do with a bookmark? <laughs> but it had Anne of Green Gables on it, and Ruth loved it, so I couldn't complain. She was supposed to wear the necklace, and I was supposed to use the bookmark until it broke 
or ripped. And then, a wish was going to come true. I lost the bookmark right away. <laughs> but I told Ruth that it had ripped, so my wish was going to come true. A few months later, she found it <laughs> in one piece. She thought I had broken the pact. She took this so seriously, she threw the necklace at me and stormed off. <laughs> Ruth and I have been friends forever, so I forgave her right away. <laughs> I wished that we would always be friends. I don't know what she wished for. <laughs> when are they supposed to be back? I'm not sure. Mom said they were just picking up some supplies for dinner. What am I supposed to call them? Your parents. Now that we're married. How about mom and dad? That's weird. Why should it be? That's what I call them. But that's you. You're related. Flesh and blood. I'm the only one who has ever called them that. You can be like the son they never had. They aren't losing a daughter. They're gaining a son. What about Ruth and Sam? Are we the first name basis generation? The what? I think that was the generation before us. When young people got married, they called their in-laws by their first name. I think it was an equality thing. And I may be young, but I still want respect sort of thing. I thought that's what you were calling my folks. Pam and Jerry? <laughs> no, that's too rebellious for me. <laughs> How is that rebellious? They are my elders and deserve to be referred to as something more official. It just wouldn't seem proper. Come on, Julie. I used to call them Pam and Jerry. Don't parents hate that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I did it. You are such a problem child. More like a problem teenager. I was so dumb for a big chunk of my life. Everyone thinks they were a rebel as a kid. But then you realize that baggy pants aren't what make you cool. Ooh, today's after school special has been brought to you by- I'm serious. <laughs> At some point, every kid thinks their parents don't understand them. So, they act out. I, for example, broke curfew and had a skateboard. Huh. <laughs> it had flames on it. Ah, oh, it was a 14 year old's dream. Got me anywhere I wanted to go. Especially away from Pam and Jerry when they fought. I don't think they cared where I was, or knew where I was half the time. Did <laughs> you ever rebel? No. Is your idea of wild pre-ripped jeans and a concert tee? No, I didn't rebel. The closest I got was dating you. Take that as a compliment. <laughs> Your turn. I didn't want to give my mom something to hold over me, so I kept all the rules. You didn't do anything? Um, I bought a pair of earrings without my parents knowing. Get back. <laughs> <laughs> if you were in a motorcycle gang, they would have called you wild thing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Did I hear something about a motorcycle? Julie's joining a gang. Oh, well, have fun! <laughs> Didn't you ever rebel as a kid, Nancy? That's Aunt Nancy to you. Well, sure. A couple of my boyfriends were troublemakers. <laughs> and I don't think my parents liked that very much. <laughs> I think one of them picked me up in a hot rod, and all my mom said was to make sure I was home for church the next day. 
Weren't you a cheerleader too? Oh yeah. <laughs> I like being a cheerleader day to day. Walking down the hall and turning heads. Oh, I was great. <laughs> but when it came to game time, I wanted to just sit and watch like your mom and dad. It was so tiring too. Having to be popular and keep up appearances, it got old really quickly. <laughs> but it's what I knew, and I was good at it. <laughs> so I kept doing it all through college. What about mom? <laughs> she was the smart one. She went to all the games with your dad and pretended like she wasn't always doing her homework and working towards Springfield University. Your dad was always into sports, but he only ever played basketball, so he went to all the football games with your mom. Did they always do stuff like that together? Mostly. Usually it was the three of us. We were inseparable in high school. Was it weird that she was friends with you? She doesn't seem the type that would fit in. <laughs> she fit perfectly. She was the perfect one. I think that's where you get it from. You're a lot like she was at your age. What? How? <laughs> well, you'll say something with this sarcastic smile and a giggle in your eye. It's hard to explain. I love that smile. It's usually when I'm in trouble. <laughs> I always thought I was more like Dad. <laughs> well, you're part of him. <laughs> but your attitude is all your mom. She's different than she was. What changed? We grew up. <laughs> College affected each of us differently. We all had experiences that changed us a bit. How can I be like her? I'm nothing like her. <laughs> well, not anymore, Jules. I know it's hard to imagine that your parents were your age. <clears throat> Dinosaurs roamed the earth. Leopard skins were in. Shoes were not. <laughs> <laughs> they had the same issues you guys are having. They had to make tough decisions and deal with the consequences. Just cut her some slack, OK? She still loves you. And I love you. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if your mom's back. Sorry I can't stay for dinner, but I wanna hear all about your trip soon. That's so weird. I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> yeah, your mom was a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm even more confused about my mom. from the birds we had to count down to the little worms we dissected. Ew! Why didn't we do that in my bio class? Because you took the easy one, and I still had to help you. Oh, and you still got a C. Right. It's all right, Nance. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. I just haven't figured out all my gifts yet. Well, we know it isn't biology. Oh, thanks. Besides, I have a feeling there's something 
Other than class is keeping you busy. Don't be jealous of my superior intellect. <laughs> oh, believe me, I ain't. <laughs> Obviously, English isn't one of your skills either. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's something else going on here. What makes you say that? Because I can tell. Tell what? What's his name? <laughs> Why do you automatically think there's a guy? I could be happy about the beautiful weather or the stroganoff in the cafeteria or those worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> you're going to sit there and tell me that you're this smiley because of some worms? Maybe. Maybe to the worms or the guy. <laughs> the guy? Oh, I knew it! Am I your best friend or am I your best friend? Is there a third option? I should go into police work. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me all about him. Do I know of him? I've ever met him. What's he like? I bet he's dreamy. <laughs> okay, first of all, we're not 12, so I don't think that dreaminess is really a factor anymore. Oh, spill, spill. <laughs> Okay, uh, his name is Mitch. Mitch. <laughs> and I met him at Carol and Don's party. <laughs> that was a great party. <laughs> I thought you left early because you had some studying to do. I did. I actually had a test the next day, but as I was leaving, he, he caught me and asked me to dance, which I know now sounds totally cheesy, but I don't know, there was just... Something about him. Dreaminess? Or something. I don't know, I, I can't explain it. Just it. What do you mean, it? Nance, I just said I can't explain it. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to try. I'm going through a drought right now. Mm -hmm. I thought guys <laughs> like girls a little ditzy. But I guess a C in bio doesn't get me anywhere. Uh, what about that one guy, Chris? Wasn't he a, a TA or something? <laughs> Chris the TA. <laughs> yeah, he was nice. I don't know. I guess we just didn't have it. Okay, now you're mocking me. <laughs> me, the one who helped you with osmosis, and who knows what you're going to need help with next semester. A little. <laughs> Chris never taught me anything, except that I should never have a cute TA in a Brit Lit class. <laughs> I couldn't concentrate at all. And yet, Charles Dickens will never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> like you'll ever read Dickens again. I might. Maybe an abridged version. Or I'll watch a movie. <laughs> Plus, Sam never really liked him, and I could never date someone my brother doesn't like. Well, that's dumb. What if he was a really great guy and you didn't even give him a chance? Well, thank you. My brother is oh. a really great guy. I meant. I know. <laughs> Sam, how is he? I just think about the three of us playing in your backyard when we were kids. A hide and seek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> three musketeers? <laughs> Well, if you're not going to marry him, at least Mitch has it. We ended up talking in the quad for hours. And by talking, you mean? No, like talking, like real talking. And, and not just, I'm standing next to you in a crowded elevator chit chat. He, I told him I had to leave and he didn't believe me. So he made me recite the periodic table to make sure I wasn't lying. That is so nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> I got a B minus the next day. No, a B minus. It was the worst grade I got all semester. But it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs>
out with this organ that plays like one note. One chord sometimes. <laughs> right, sometimes it's a chord. But it plays this one thing for like a year. Not always a year though. A couple changes in a few months. It differs depending on the length of the note. Like a quarter note will play more quickly than a whole note. So what's the purpose of this again? <laughs> well, the piece the organ is playing was composed by an eccentric type of guy. Cage, I think. John Cage. He wanted to be played ASLSP, meaning as slow as possible. He wants it played over 600 years. I think it's just a way to hide a poorly written music. <laughs> Wait, what's this one of? Julie trying to sneak up on the organ. <laughs> That's my girl. So, uh, why 600 years? Well, it's what, 630 something? Yes, 639. There's an organ built in that same church in 1361. Subtract that from the year 2000 and you get 369. The first note was performed in 2001. There's some plaque there about how the progression of music is supposed to represent optimism and idealism. And how it's supposed to be earth-shattering and transcend music as we know it. And it's not even completely built. Every year, a new piece is added to make it sound better. Basically, it's money. So, how do the notes get played? Does someone sit there and hold them down? I'd hate to have that job. <laughs> no, the notes get held by these little sandbag things. See? Right. It's all a big show. Avant-garde and all that. A little too artsy for me. People we talk to in the village think it's pretty funny. It's supposed to be about time and taking time to appreciate things that don't happen as quickly. We ask them why, and they're like, why not? <laughs> I can't imagine holding on to something for so long. Here's the rest of the pictures. Domes, castles, the Rhine. Wait a second. This doesn't look like Germany. Oh, that's the astronomical clock in Prague. It's a few days after we decided to stay longer. That's right, you guys called from somewhere else. <laughs> from Brussels. The host family that I stayed with when I studied in college wanted us to visit the southern countries and convinced us to take the trains. We saw Austria, Switzerland, made it down to France, and Italy. Your schedule's allowed for that? <laughs> well, I didn't have to be back until school started, and we were home before Labor Day. Plus, the library's willing to be flexible. They always hire extra help in the summer. Are we going to get through all these tonight? <laughs> Some of them may be a little blurry. Miss Kodak here is still trying to get used to the camera. You know, I'm not. I take great pictures. Wait a second. What's this one of? It's all gray and fuzzy. And what's Surprise! Surprise! It's our baby. <laughs> We're going to have a baby. Are you serious? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> That's the most recent ultrasound. I took a test when we were over there, but we confirmed it when we got back. Oh, isn't that great? Our little girl! Ruth, she's gonna have a baby. I don't know what it is about boys and baseball, but I was no exception. I'd have taken my bat with me, the one I got for my ninth or 10th birthday, shiny aluminum when I got it, the kind that would clink when you hit it. I'd practice every day until I mastered actually hitting the ball. The clink ended up in the neighbor's yard a few times. It didn't matter as long as I was playing. Yesterday would have been the perfect day. It was partly cloudy. The sun was peeking out just enough for you to have to squint your eyes. I'd be up. The pitcher would wait for the right signal and let loose. And even though it's a fastball, everything would slow down. My mom would be watching from the stands. Even Julie would be there. I'd catch a proud grin from them, take a deep breath, and swing just like Dad taught me. Pow! The ball sails toward the left field wall. No matter how fast his legs will go, the outfielder won't get to it. Right up over the hat that's too big for him, and it's gone. Victoriously, I make my way around the bases, my name being cheered from all over the field. Friends, coaches, even kids in the dugout. And Mom. Again, she gives me that smile. Perfect. School, 
vacation, girls, I don't care about those. Just that day. I didn't ever get that day. I know I missed a lot of them, but one like that is what I'd really like. meeting and his car's in the shop, so I have to take him. And he promised me ice cream. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. It's like a date. <laughs> Gotta keep things fresh, right? <laughs> so did you talk to Julie already? Yeah, she's gonna send me a slideshow or something so I can look at the pictures later. Good. Even though seeing them in person would be better. That's all right. I can wait. <laughs> she and Craig asked me about growing up. It was cute! Really? What did you say? <laughs> Just how popular I was and what a nerd you were. <laughs> because that's what happened. What else did you say? Just how things were different in college. Did you say anything about <laughs> I didn't say anything about him. Call me when you get home, okay? Sure thing. Can I tell you something? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, listen to me. You need to hear this. Are you listening? Yes. I'm only saying this because I love you. <clears throat> Just say it, Nance. You need to let go, Ruth. What? Look, I wanted to say something for a long time. Why now? Because Julie really needs you. And who are you to say what I need to do? Because you're not the only one who's ever lost anything? Oh, you know. Do you? Yes. No. I don't think you do. You think because you've been here for all these years, you can sit there and tell me to let go. Ruth, you don't even know what I'm holding on to. Well, it isn't your daughter. Ruth, she isn't a child anymore. She can tell there's a reason you aren't close, why you keep her at a distance. And do you think you know why? A baby. There was a baby, wasn't there? Yes. Not with Sam. Before Sam. Yes? Just that one time. That 
that one thing shouldn't be so hard to forget. <coughs> but it wasn't only once. It was every day. It, it happens again every day, sometimes more. And yet, there's been something comforting about the repetition. It's deadened me. But you aren't dead, Ruth. A part of you is, maybe. But the rest of you is still here. I wanted to die, Nancy. If I had died instead of my baby, I, I wouldn't have to think about it. It would have been better than this lonely hell I've made for myself. You think your life is hell? It was. When? When you married a man who loves you no matter what? When your beautiful daughter was born? When she found a husband who would do anything for her? When I chose! When I chose! to abort my child. And every day since then? No. But whenever I'm reminded but I made that choice. How did you? I knew you, Ruthie. I was there. Remember? Sam was too. We were always with you. We are always. But you don't always see it. understand what it's like losing a part of you. I only ever told Alan and Sam found out later. I only got pregnant once and it was a miscarriage. Nancy, I had no idea. Right away, the doctors told us we had a very slim chance, and it might not even be possible. Eventually, I got pregnant, and we were thrilled. It was right around Christmas. And we were so excited to tell everyone. Before we left for mom's, Alan was really worried about me. So we stayed home that night. That's why you weren't there? It tore me apart. <clears throat> told us you were expecting Julie. I decided that if I wasn't meant to have my own child, I was going to be the best aunt your daughter could ever have. I think I was making up for something. 
I've always been grateful for your relationship with Julie. But she's your child, Ruth. You're her mother. Julie had no idea that this would affect you so much. Of course she didn't. No one does. Don't blame her. I've never blamed anyone but myself. A baby? How am I supposed to act like I'm glad about this? Aren't you? How can I be? Danny, you know what happened. What are you going to lose by telling her? You! Is that what you think? It's true! If I let go of you... If you let go of me, you might be able to hold on to someone else. Someone who can help you through this better than I ever can. Danny, I barely know her. I've never been able to look at her. What if she hates me? She's your daughter! She can't hate you any more than you hate yourself. Mom? 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 There you are. We were all wondering where you went. Are you okay? Yeah, of course. What's wrong? Nothing. Just took me by surprise, that's all. You should have seen Craig when I told him. We were walking through this little Austrian town at night, and he ran up to every street vendor on the sidewalk and told them, my wife's going to have a baby. It was the cutest thing. Mom. What's up? Because I, I just don't know what to say. You could tell me how happy you are for me. Why can't you just be happy for me? I don't think I can do that, Julie. Why not? This is a good thing, Mom. Craig and I are so excited for this baby. Are you worried about something? It's not that. You think we're not ready. Look, I just talked to Dad about this. Everything's happening fast, but we know this is the right thing. I think you are ready. I think you're going to be a great mother. Then what is it? Try and be happy for her, Mom. You think I can just do that? Just forget everything I did and go on? Not forget. Forgive. She needs you. She needs her mother, and she's going to need your help. I can't help her. I can't even help myself. Mom? I can't do this without you. You see? You've been through this before. I'm going to ask questions. <sighs> questions? Yeah, what are things you did when you went through this? You don't want to know. <laughs> yes, I do. I want to know everything. I can't tell her. You. I can't tell you. Yes, you can. You should. Uh, tell me what? No, I shouldn't. No one knows. Don't you think it's about time they found out? No. What will they think? <laughs> what is it? What's wrong? I am. I did something wrong. Some, something horrible. I'm sure it's not that bad. It is, Julie. You'll never forgive me for it. What is it? You can tell me. 
Tell her, Mom. Do it for me. You... You should have a brother, Julie. What? Danny. He's my son and your brother. Birthday cards? Mom, I don't get what you're saying. And I don't know how to tell you. It's all right, Mom. She needs to hear it, and you need to say it. Almost 26 years ago, I found out I was pregnant. 26? But weren't you and Dad? It wasn't your father, Julie. It was a guy I dated in college, and I got pregnant. Well, why have I never met? I was so selfish. It's the biggest mistake of my life, and it's haunted me since the day it happened. What happened? After I was told I was pregnant, I went to another doctor. He told me how far along I was, when my due date would be. I remember that doctor was so cheerful. He told me he would be happy to help me along in my pregnancy. But by then, the fear was setting in. I wanted the nightmare to stop. It was then that I decided not to go through with it. Didn't you have anyone? His father, grandma? I never asked for anyone's help. <laughs> I was too ashamed. I convinced myself no one could have helped me. I was young and stupid. I made an appointment at a clinic a few days later. The people there had no emotion. They called it dilation and curatage. I chose this procedure because it could be done in one day, 10 minutes even. I wanted it gone. Not once did they call it a baby. I didn't think about it as a baby. I didn't want to think about it that way. I convinced myself. It, it was just the wrong time. Maybe I would have time for it later. I was too busy then. I had too much going for me, for this to change things. I couldn't do this by myself. But you weren't alone. I wasn't alone. I know that now. I had never felt so isolated.
I remember everything about that waiting room, down to the women's health magazines lying out. I didn't know that by 15 weeks, my baby had started to grow hair. He was the size of an orange, and his ears were forming. Maybe he could hear my voice, or the sound of the soft piano music playing in the background. Then a girl walked in the door. A girl who wasn't more than 16. I could tell she had been crying. We sat in silence for a few minutes. And our eyes met. She sniffled back more tears. It'll, It'll be, be okay, okay, I told, told her. her. They, they said, said it doesn't, doesn't take long. long. I thought I was helping her. Then they called my name and a nurse came and brought me in the back to an exam room. There was no going back. They had this picture on the ceiling for me to look at so I wouldn't have to think about what was happening. That picture burned into my memory. They took my baby from me while I looked at people walking in the rain. My mind never changed so quickly. In one instant, everything that I knew was told, told myself, I knew was wrong. What I did, what I was too late to stop, was wrong. When it was over, I began shaking. My whole body went into shock. My skin, it was cold, and it, they put a blanket over me until I calmed down. They told me that they wanted to keep me overnight for observation until I was safe <coughs> to go home. I told them I would be fine. I didn't want to be there a second longer. I, I felt dirty and empty. I wanted to cry, but I felt empty. For more than 25 years, I've tried to push the memory of what I did to the back of my mind. But it won't go away. I constantly wonder what he'd be like if I let him live. Danny would have been born on September 20th. Yesterday. That's what they're from. Every year, I go out and I buy one. I stand in the aisle for hours trying to find just the right one. It makes me feel like, like he's still here. Like he's still a part of me. Isn't he? He's not, Julie! Don't you understand? I killed him! I had him sucked out of me and flushed away! I chose to rip my baby from me! This is the part that they never tell you. 
I thought I was destroying a pregnancy. Not once did I think I was destroying a life. And not just his. You can't say that, Mom. What do you want me to say, Julie? He wouldn't want you to feel this way. You know I don't, Mom. I've told you that before. I know. <laughs> so this is it. This is why you've never... There's always been something between us. A block, a barrier, whatever you want to call it. And now you tell me about him? It, it makes me wonder if there's only so much love you can give. I thought when you were born, things would change. They, they didn't. didn't, did they? I thought, I thought I, I could put Danny behind me, but I couldn't, I, I can't let go of him. In my mind, you were replacing the baby I killed. Is that what I am? A replacement? Do you? Do you love him more than me? What? Danny. Do you love him more than me? How can you ask me that? It's all right, Mom. You can love her, too. She's been waiting for a long time. Just answer the question. I want to know. How could you? I've known it was wrong since the day- No! Not that! How can you ignore me for all this time? I haven't. Sure. Because every girl wants to feel invisible. Overlooked. Disregarded. I've been the tag-along sister my whole life to a brother I didn't even know I had. Were you ever going to tell me? I wasn't planning to. Oh, another thing you didn't plan. Don't take that tone with me. Or what, Mom? What are you going to do? You can't hurt me anymore. I hurt you? Yeah. You've been so busy feeling sorry for yourself, you haven't even noticed me. Remind me not to do that to my child. I never meant to do that. It's not something I tried to do. But you didn't try to care either, did you? Did you? Recitals, parties, carpools, it all makes sense. You were never there. Why would you be if you'd rather have him? What's he like? Everything I never was. Stop it. He's not here, Mom. You said so yourself. Only I'm still here. I have been for 23 years. Why couldn't you see that? You couldn't. You've been too selfish to notice anyone but yourself. It was your own selfishness that got you into this, isn't it? Yes. All those arguments that we had were because I didn't want you to make the same mistakes I did. What mistakes? How could I avoid them if I didn't know what they were? I'm sorry. We're fine. I'm gone now. You got what you've always wanted. You never have to see me again. I found someone who I'm honest with and who actually cares about me. Tell Dad I said goodbye. No. You don't get to do this. 
You don't need to come here and tell me that I'm a horrible person because I've never loved you. It's the truth, isn't it? I might be a horrible person, but Mom doesn't want to judge to you. You can think that if you want. It doesn't change the fact that you cared more about the child you never had than the one you did. No. You didn't even care about him. Does Dad even know? What? How could you keep something like this from your husband? What if he found out what that- I don't know! You should have told me, Mom! Instead, you shut me out and I've never known why until now! This is what I've been afraid of all this time! That someone would find out! Don't you think it would have helped you? It doesn't matter anymore! It matters to me! Julian, I don't expect you to forgive me. I'm not sure that I can do that just yet. I'm sorry. I can't be happier for you, Julie. I really am. Hoping you could help me. I'm sorry. In two weeks. They wanted me to come back today. Should be getting ready and going back to that place. I don't think I can know what's there. It will all be exactly as it was when I left. I'm not the same. You're not the same. I'd rather go back two weeks. You don't have to say anything. You can just listen. I thought I was in control. But then you came along and I wasn't ready to make choices for anyone but myself. It was so easy to make. It's this part that's hard. someone. Who was it? No one. Oh. You want to talk about it? No. Didn't think so. But it's been a couple months. Maybe it's time to get back in the game. I'm sick of playing the game, Nancy. 
Look, I'm here if you want. I appreciate it, but I don't really want to. Want to talk about it, I get it. Man, he is such a jerk for dumping you. You sound like Sam. Well, he is. He's a big jerk. I can't agree with you on that one. How can you be so calm? Getting angry with Mitch isn't going to help anything. <laughs> oh, it's going to help me a lot. <laughs> you guys had a good thing going. I can't believe he'd just up and leave you like that really wasn't that sudden. It's been a long time coming. That shouldn't matter. He should at least have the decency to give you some line like, I think we should see other people. Or, I need to figure out who I am right now. <gasps> Maybe he had to figure out who Teresa was. What? Isn't that his Spanish partner, Teresa? Regardless, he's a schmuck. It's not all his fault. You're not blaming yourself, are you? This is not your fault. I know. It doesn't matter anymore. It's over. It's gone. What's gone? Why are you defending him? I'm not. There are a lot of reasons why a relationship stops working. Okay, now that sounds like a line. Maybe it is. This is what girls do, Ruthie. We lament. In groups. Should I call Carol and have her bring the peanut butter? I've got the chocolate and the Cary Grant movie. No. Are you sure? It's extra chunky. Or is this a situation for iced tea? What do you say, girls night out at the bar? No. I think I'll be all right if, if I leave you alone. I won't be alone. I'll be fine. Really? Positive. All right, but I'm going to call you later. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, right. Talk to you later? Yeah. OK. Good night. Thanks. Sorry about that. I can't believe after all I went through, here I am talking to you. It doesn't make any sense. Somehow, the only way I feel better is by telling you about it. Which is weird, because you were my problem to begin with. I was going to tell Mitch about it, and he bailed before things could get any worse. And I did the same thing. One day, you think everything is going great, then all of a sudden he's gone. To be cut off from the one thing that you thought loved you. I guess you know what that's like. Nancy likes to think that she knows what's best for me. Like she's my mother or something.
it's your mother. I don't know what that is. I'm not one. more. Some people can't keep their job and their home life separate. I always combine them. I can't help it. It's my job to care, to listen to people and help them fix their lives. When a storm hits, I'm there to assess the damage and help them get back on their feet, or put a roof over their heads. Some cases take longer than others. Usually it depends on the type of damage. Sometimes I give an estimate and that's it. It's out of my hands. There's nothing more I can do. Other times, I'm with them every step of the way. In this case, it's both. I don't even know what I'm assessing. I know there's damage, but I don't have the answers because I don't know the cause. I can guess, but I have no expertise. People invest in things of value. Cars, homes, lives. Risks are calculated and chances are taken. I knew what I was getting into. Only, I couldn't have lost Ruth because I never had her. Sure, we dated, she said I do. But she's never been all there, and I knew that. Someday she'll be ready, and when she is, I'm always going to be here, whatever the damage is. I guess it was today. You bought a card every year? For 25 years. He's so real to me. I've even talked to him. Or I think I have. It's number nine. Here's to hitting it out of the ballpark, birthday boy. Wishing you all the best on your special day. I've always thought he would, would have liked to play baseball. For your 16th birthday, we know you wanted a car, but all you get is this lousy card. Happy birthday. Why did you wait so long? Fear. Mostly that you'd never forgive me. Is that what you thought? You really think I'd do that? I couldn't risk it. So you left me in the dark. I was going to tell Mitch about it. But then he left. Things got a little easier when you were around. I'd forget for a while and then when I'd remember, I'd feel guilty for being as happy as we were. I didn't know if telling you about the abortion would make things better or worse. You might have left too. I, 
I never do that, Ruthie. Where would I go? I've been in this since we were kids. I'm always here. I told you I was going to stick with this with whatever this issue was. And I meant that, Ruth. I only wish I'd known. You were the best thing for me because you never tried to put me back together. You just held all the pieces. If I'd have pushed, I was afraid you would have broken all together. I might have. Julie knows? I told her last night. As I was telling her, I knew you needed to know, too. How did she take it? Not well. She reacted just as I always thought she would, and now I don't know what else to do. She'll be all right. It's a lot to handle. I hope she can forgive me. But I know I don't deserve it after all I've done. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> None of us do. That's why there's this thing called grace. Do you forgive me? For what? Danny, I've always liked that name. I can't go to Aunt Nancy for this. She doesn't know what it's like. She watched me grow up and she held my hand and she bought me birthday cards. But she doesn't know. And neither do I. That's why I... That's why I need your help. I'm dealing with it. And finding a way, searching for something that resembles forgiveness. But then I think about him. I, I think of you driving him to practices and laughing on the way home. I can picture you making him Halloween costumes and packing him lunches. And I wonder where I fit in. Why does he get you? Dad and Aunt Nancy could only do so much. I didn't get why my mom wasn't at every dance recital and volleyball camp. I didn't know why Dad drove me to school every day. Aunt Nancy bought me my first lipstick. It was normal for me. I didn't like it. But I got used to it. All those things that I learned to avoid make sense now. Triggers. I get it. We both have the same problem for two separate issues. We both need to forgive you. Then I think about you. Back then, I think about what I would have done. What if I didn't have anyone? No Craig, no dad? What if I was all alone? Just me and... <coughs> I 
The only thing I can think is, <coughs> I need my mother. You, Mom, I'd have told you I wanted your help. And I still do. I've never been without Dad or Aunt Nancy, but I've needed you. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not still a little upset. <coughs> but I understand. Mom? I'm here to apologize. I was jealous. When you told me about Danny, everything from my childhood came back. And I didn't realize it. But I was jealous. He's had a hold over you I never have. But I've wanted my mother. And I'm just sorry you had to go through this by yourself. I got used to living in guilt. It was easier than living in forgiveness. Somehow, I thought I was protecting you from the mistakes I made by keeping them from you. For that, I'm sorry. I never should have kept that from you, Julie. Sorry for the way I've treated you. I wish I could have given you more, but I didn't know how. I gave all my love to somebody else. And you and your father deserve better than that. Told your dad. He knows everything now. What did he say? Not a lot. He just listened. But he knows. And he's still here. I thought nobody could love me after what I'd done. But he did. Even though he didn't know everything, he loved every part of me something I was never able to do. I was selfish, too. We don't always realize why we're put in these families. But someone does. I guess we're all kind of children in a way. In God's grace. That's why we're here. You know, I can get a picture for that if you want. I'd like that. I'm going to go talk to Dad. I'll be right back. You'll be okay? Yeah. You look a little tired. It's been a long day. You've all been through a lot. You know, I used to think about this day, when everyone would find out. It didn't turn out like this in my head. How did it end? Well, there were a lot more tears. And actually, <coughs> I was alone. Nancy, Sam, Julie, you, everyone was gone. Definitely different. I didn't realize that telling Julie was the first step. I feel like, like I've turned around and, and for the first time, I'm loosening my grip. It's great, Mom. I didn't realize that sharing something like that would be so... Easy? Yeah. I've been holding on to my secret for so long my hands were numb. I had been clutching for so long. I was numb. It's time, don't you think? I'm tired of feeling that way. And now you don't have to. You've got a family <coughs> here who loves you no matter what. I never let myself see that until now. I know I can't ever bring you back, Danny, but, but I thought if I told anyone, 
I'd have to face the fact that you were really gone. You'll never lose me, Mom. I'm always here in one way or another. I had a lot of time to think about things last night. It's finally sinking in. The forgiveness. I know it's not going to happen in a day, but it feels a little closer. <coughs> I'm a child of grace. You're not going to make me say it, are you? Say what? That you were right all along. Only if you want to. I'm what you've made me, Mom. I only tell you the things you tell yourself. Mom? That's my cue. Wait, Danny. You'll be fine. You've let go a little, haven't you? But I'm not ready to let you leave. Not yet. Yes, you are. And I'll be back. Not forgetting, but... Remembering. Right. Besides, you've got Julie now. I've got a picture for you. When was this? My graduation. Aunt Nancy took it of the three of us. I didn't know we had this. <coughs> Dad had it. It's perfect. Julie? Yeah? Wait here. I have something I want to give you. I got this for... I've had this. You're going to need it now. It's for you. And your baby. I love it. Thank you. I'm... I'm glad you're here. I am too. Thank you. Thank you.